What is up everyone, welcome to the vlog. So I'm Jacob, this is my channel. It's actually my first vlog ever, I've never done this before. So bear with me, it's not gonna be the greatest video in the world, but it's just, I'm starting, so let's get started. So this channel is mainly gonna, gonna consist of my day-to-day -day life here in South Florida, um, my own animals, animals I get to work with, all my animal adventures abroad. So it's gonna be an awesome channel. Um, starting out, I'm gonna do about two to three videos a week. As the channel grows, progresses, I'm gonna do about four to five. So today's episode is just gonna be all the animals that I have here at my house, my reptiles, all my tortoises, turtles, snakes, iguanas, all that awesome stuff. So guys, let's get started, let's go. All right guys, we're headed over to the rhino iguana enclosure this way. So I have this banana for them right now. They are gonna lose their, literally, literally lose their minds when they see this banana to eat it. So let's go check them out guys. We're here at the rhino iguana enclosure. Let's go on inside. Look at her. Oh, hi. How are you doing today? So this is, ow, come on. Ow, that kind of hurt. So this is Luno, one of my rhino iguanas. She's very, very friendly. She's very nice. All she wants to do is just jump right up on you when you come in, you know, the, the cage and you say hello. But honestly, she's probably just looking for a snack. How are you doing? Look at that. She got some shed right there. Can I can I can I peel that? No? Okay. Alright, off. Ah! Alright, she hopped off. So there's Luna. Then we have thing number one. She's not named yet. She's not very nice. Can I pet you? Oh. Wow, this is so surprising. This is the first time she's ever let me pet her. But you gotta be careful. These guys have a nasty, nasty button. So I gotta be on point. Then we have Dozer. Hello, Dozer. Dozer used to be really mean. Dozer's turned into a very nice, sweet rhino iguana. So you can see why they do call them rhino iguanas. He's got the little horn there. She's got some horns. She's got some horns. These guys are from Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So if you're gonna have any pet iguana, I would definitely recommend a rhino iguana or the Lewis eye, which you guys are gonna see in a little bit. They're super nice. When you raise them from babies, they're just, they're just so tame. So now it's banana time. I'm gonna give it to, to her. And now they're all gonna come for the bananas. Those are coming down, he's like, I need my banana. Banana's definitely not the healthiest, you know, fruit for them, but I give it to them as an occasional snack. I had to step out for a second. They decided that, you know, my toes were looking like a snack. So I normally try to go in there with sandals on or whatever, but I had to get out real quick because as nice as they are, they will mistake feet and fingers for food if they're in a feeding frenzy. So I'm gonna say bye to them. Bye guys. Next on the list, I have this guy. I'm squinting. Sun's in my eyes, hurts. This is my Galapagos tortoise. So let me actually flip the camera for you guys. Ah, uh, this is actually a girl. So she is actually the world's largest um, species of tortoise. So since she is a girl, she's only gonna get around you know, 350, maybe 400 pounds when full grown. She's looking for these flowers. So I'm actually giving her a hibiscus flower snack. You're, you're missing it. You Like, you're totally missing it. You gotta be careful with them as well. One wrong move and when you're not paying attention, these guys will mistake fingers and toes as well, you know, for food. That's not because they're, they, they wanna eat your, your fingers or toes, it's just, it just looks like a yummy snack to them. Especially any bright, anything brightly colored. Say bye to this big girl, let her roam the yard, eat some yummy grass. Bye. How are you doing? You doing good today? I'm glad. It's really good. She's like, oh, you don't have food, I'm out of here. I don't want anything to do with you. Next on the grand tour for all of, you know, my animals, we have some red foot tortoises. So she's actually unnamed still. 
She was actually a rescue. She does have something called metabolic bone disease. So a lot of people get these guys, they don't know how to take care of them. They don't give her the proper lighting. So she has trouble walking. You can see her legs, she, you know, she can never really tuck them away. And you can see it's pretty sad that she can't really, you know, get around that well. But she gets around fine. She eats fine. It, it's, it's all right. She's going to live a happy life. Let's see some of the other ones. It's a big pen. These are easy pens to make. All you have to do is you go to Home Depot, you get these bricks. They're like... $2.50 each, stack them however high, piece of uh, rebar. And then you have, you just put slats of wood in. What are, you, what are you looking to escape? You can't escape. You can't do that. That's that's actually kind of illegal to do here. You gotta stay in there, buddy, I'm sorry. Let's see, there's some other ones. Some tortoise butts. Oh, hey, how are you? How are you doing today? I've actually raised this one. It's not, I've had her since she was literally this big, the size of a strawberry. She's a little munchkin. See, she gets around pretty well. She's making her way over here. They're looking for food, even though they already ate. And you can see there's one right there, burrowed away. So definitely one of the coolest beginner tortoises and tortoises in general you can have I love them and if you're in South Florida great tortoises to have here just because of our weather what do we have here this is probably the most beautiful tortoise in the world in my opinion this is a gorgeous radiated tortoise from Madagascar you can just see how you know beautiful their their pattern is nature's geometry is just perfect can I see the bottom side of you just amazing animal. Now let's put you in the grass. This is actually my one and only radiated. I've had it since it was much smaller. Growing nice and good, nice smooth shell. So I'm gonna be adding more of these guys to the collection soon. Sadly, these are actually one of the most trafficked tortoises in the world for, you know, ancient Chinese medicine. They like to eat their, their legs, pretty disgusting, as well as the pet trade. So, in 2018 alone, they I know of just two um, houses that were raided on Madagascar, and they recovered 18,000 of them. Sadly, a lot of them died because they were being kept in just horrible, nasty conditions. But that's the sad reality for a lot of wildlife today is they're being trafficked for the pet trade. So, especially overseas, if you're gonna ever buy one of these, make sure it's not a trafficked tortoise. This one was captive, born and bred, by a great conservationist friend of mine, Jason Abels. Um, so support captive breeding. Just don't buy anything that is potentially trafficked because you're supporting it. You know, stop the problem by not being a part of it. Hi. Right. There's no demand for them, then they won't traffic them. Next here we have another Galapagos tortoise, one that is much smaller. And this is one that I've raised since it was literally about a month old, only about yay big. Yay big. So just such an awesome animal. It's, you know, so crazy to think that this thing's gonna be, if it's a male, 500 pounds one day. And he's only, you can see, he's not too big. He's a good size from what he was this big. This is only in about two and a half years. So he actually loves his shell rubs. Look at that, he's going crazy. So once he gets bigger, he'll be on free roam throughout the yard. But for now, he's in. He's got a nice size pen with a little hut, his water dish. Still very shy animal, not very socialized yet. But I'm working on it. The next little dude that's up on this tour is my albino iguana. Well, not dude, little girl that's on, up on the tour. This is probably my most beautiful lizard. You want to come out, please? Oh yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, I know you want to come. By far, you know, my most beautiful lizard. I've had this thing since it was about, I don't know, a year and a half. What are you doing? Where are you trying to go? You can't go anywhere. I don't know where you're going. Can you relax? Relax, chill out, chill out. So, she can't really see that well because she is an albino. 
So albinos can't see all that well just because they have red eyes. So she's like reaching out for a branch, but there's no branch here for her. So I've had her about a year and a half, maybe a little longer. I don't know, I'm bad at math. And I'm not gonna do that in my head right now. So I'm raising her up for future breeding. She's really getting some good size on her compared to when I got her, literally like tiny four or five inches. Just a stunning animal. And I really hope that she keeps this yellow throughout her whole life. Um, a lot of them don't, a lot of them get a white color, but nonetheless, and a super cool animal to have. Going in there. Let's close you up. Some other really cool iguana friends that I have are my Baker Eye Iguanas. So I actually produce babies from, who is it? That female last year, she laid 14 beautiful eggs. And this is actually gonna be this girl's first time laying this year. This female, you can see she is definitely full of eggs. You see those little bumps right there? So she's nice and fat, growing those egg follicles in her. Should be laying around, last year she laid actually June 3rd. So anywhere from, you know, late, you know, mid to late April until like beginning of June is when these beautiful girls are gonna lay. So I actually have one baby left from them, from the um, island of Utila in Honduras. They are critically endangered species due mainly to, you know, deforestation as well as feral dogs and cats on the island. If you have cats at your house, keep them inside. They kill native wildlife. Really does a number on these guys. Can I pet you? I don't really want to be pet. Wow, I am just ecstatic to see this. This is awesome. So depending on, you know, the temperature, their mood, they can change colors. So right now he's kind of dark, but when he's fired up, he will be the most powder blue baker eye you have ever seen in your life. It's crazy. He's like, she's pretty blue right now. Just incredible animals, you can see. Hi. Hey. So I'm actually gonna give them a little snack right now. Let's go, let's go do this, some, some worms. All right, we're here gonna get some worms, some super worms, some deliciousness for these guys. Can you get some? All right, let's go back. All right, we're back, getting ready to feed these guys a little worm. Some super worm, a little snacky boo for them. Oh yeah, that, that's good, right? And any spiny tail iguana's diet, protein's, you know, pretty essential part of it. You know, it's not main part of their diet, but around 15, 20%. Some to this boy right here. Oh, we got a mouthful. Wow, that's awesome. Awesome stuff. So, relax. I'm just gonna put this at the bottom for them. Guys, we are now at my Lewis Eye and Cherry Head Tortoise enclosure. Put the lock there. Come on, get on. I'm looking through the camera, so it's like hard to see. And the sun's blaring on the screen, so it's hard to see as well what's up guys we got Xena there Xeno cherry head one cherry head two so these are my Grand Cayman Lewis eye hybrid iguanas now here in the United States it is illegal to own pure Lewis eyes just because of their um, status in the wild the conservation success story of these guys is like absolutely incredible um, I think it was like 1992 there was only, or 95, there was only 75 of these guys left in the wild. But due to the Blue Iguana Recovery Program, there is now, um, they've released their thousandth iguana. Can I pet you? So yes, their water's a little dirty. I do change the water every single day, but I have tortoises that like to go in there and poop. But Zeno, you know, when I got Zeno, he wasn't too nice. He tried to bite me, he tried to go after me. It's because he didn't know me, but I spent a lot of time with him, so now he just comes right over for pets. So he really isn't fired up right now in his true colors. Ow! This little guy just bit my toe. You can't do that. 
like I was saying, his colors, when he's fully fired up and colored out, he's a powder blue. He's just a big, impressive lizard. He's probably around, he's around four feet long, three and a half, four feet. You cannot eat my toes, toe monster. And then we have Xena right here. Xena had stitches recently. Um, he nipped her on the back of her leg, but I've took her to the vet. She got stitched up right there and she's good to go. Now out of all of them, Xena's not too nice. She's probably gonna try to tail with me. No, Shh. let me pet you. You know it feels good, come on. She's shedding right now, so take some shed off. Yeah, you know it feels good, I'm telling you. Look at that shed coming off. Let's see our true colors. Then we have some of my raise up cherry heads. You can see the variation between cherry heads. That one's pretty dark. Whereas this guy has tons of marbling on his shell. Don't come after me, Zeno. Zeno doesn't like phones too much. So he sees the phone, he's trying to bite the phone. These guys can be really funny, like even a certain colored bucket they couldn't like, or even certain shoes I'll wear in here and he doesn't like them, he wants to go after them. Really weird, I don't understand why. So I am heading out of here now, so I wanna say bye everyone. Bye Zeno. Bye big boy. Now we're gonna move on to, to these guys. What could it be? What could be in here? This is a fairly new setup. And I got a basking platform for some turtles, some awesome water plants that my sister's friend gave me because he has a bunch of water plants and stuff like that. But let's see if we can find one of the turtles. They like to sit here in the silt. All right, there we go. So these are definitely one of the coolest turtles I think anyone can own. They're Japanese pond turtles. So they have this really unique color. They got greens, blacks, yellow. And on the bottom, they're a jet black. So I have three of these guys in here. Look, this other guy's cruising on over. Hey, dude. Hey, little dude. So I'm not going to grab him and disturb him, but just super cool turtles. He's a little shy. He's his little nose. His little pig nose. So cute. You can see he's got an extremely long tail that goes from right here. See it sticking out right there. So awesome animals. But stay tuned. I'm going to be putting a mini dinosaur in here. So a good friend of mine, Robbie Kezzy, I'll tag him down below, at Get Swamped from Swamp Brothers on Discovery Channel. Stay tuned. There's going to be a dinosaur going in here. Stand by, guys. We're in my garage now, and I'm going to show you guys. A few of the things I'm just growing up in here, I try to keep things inside the least amount as possible, just because the natural sunlight for any animal is the best thing ever. So I only have a few things in here, but some pretty cool things at that. So let me show you guys. All right, guys, so I'm here right now with my red tail boa. So with him, I actually caught him wild as a tiny, tiny little baby at the Deering Estate. The Deering Estate, which is only about 15 minutes from my house, actually more like 10 is the only wild population of red tail boas in the entire country. Now, they're not supposed to be here. They are from South America. They are an invasive species. So basically they got this really cool backstory is back in you know the 60s and 70s when they were bringing in lots of drugs from Central and South America, they put them in these crates. They put the drugs in the crate and then they put big boas in the crate. So if anyone found the crates, they would not want to stick their hand in there because there's going to be a mean eight foot boa in there trying to bite them. So they actually dumped a lot of these snakes in the Deering Estate since South Florida has such a perfect environment for them that's similar to, you know, South America. They did well. They've thrived here. So they've been here for, you know, about 40, 50 years now. So I like to go out in the summertime and find these babies. So we're actually going to feed them. He actually has a pretty bad feeding response. He actually tagged me on my thumb the other day he got his rat i actually put tape on the tongs just so you know if he strikes it it doesn't hurt him too much all right buddy all right boom got it he is lightning fast and you saw how quick i mean you didn't even see it before he had it such an incredible animal. We are now here with some of my grow up tortoises. We have my yellow foots right here and my 
one of my little baby red foot. This red foot's just got such a cool head. It's just super orange, super beautiful animal. This guy's gonna be a year old in a few months. When they're born, they're literally about this big, super tiny. So once he gets bigger, I'm gonna put him out just cause he'll get knocked around with those big guys out there as well as if he flips, the smaller the animal, the easier they are to you know cook in the hot sun if they flip over. And then I have yellow foot number one, yellow foot number two. Now, yellow foot number one is a little bit special needs. He was just born like that. He's got a slight, you know, you can see that tilt to his head. So he flips a lot. So I'm thinking he's gonna live his entire life indoors because he flips a lot in here. And if he's outside and I don't see him, he's gonna flip and cook in the sun. So I've never raised yellow foots before, but from what I've noticed, the difference between, you know, red foots and them, growth wise is these guys grow much slower. Just for some reason, this guy is gonna be two years old soon and he's this big. And this guy is about to be a year. At two years old, he's gonna be double this size. So pretty crazy. These are just such awesome tortoises to have. They're just super cool. All right, guys, we're in my room now. We're gonna check out my my turtles right there. Water's looking a little dirty, but those are my turtles. And then we're gonna check out my alligator lizard, which is right here. So let me flip the camera around for you guys so you can check them out. A Bronia smith eye or a, a, a boreal alligator lizard. This guy is an incredible animal that was a gift from my good friend, Forrest Fanning. This is one of the rare Abronia species and they're actually like literal dinosaurs. Come on, focus. Wonderful. They're like living dinosaurs. You can see he's got the little crest and honestly, the video does absolutely no justice to his colors in person. When you take them outside, it's just an incredible animal. So I'm gonna be getting a female soon, hopefully, and breed these guys. So I did a pretty, probably my favorite setup I've ever done for anything indoors. Did some moss on the bottom. Did a golden pothos there. These guys love cork bark, so it's a big cork bark tube that he can go in and sleep. Drill the hole and put a beautiful bromeliad, some air plants. I changed this water four days ago and it, this filter's busted. This is a 60 gallon Tetra Whisper. I'm calling you guys out, Tetra. 60 gallon filter in seven, eight gallons of water. Fresh bio bag, everything. Four days in the water is gross. So I'm gonna actually be changing it when I get in from lunch. But let's take a look at you, little guy. So this is one of my albino pink belly side neck turtles that I am raising up for future breeding. Just a gorgeous animal. Because he is albino, I do feed him separately. You know what, hold on. Let me shut the filter off because you guys are not gonna be able to hear this audio. Come on. Oh. There we go. Wow, that was so annoying. So like I was saying, these guys don't see very well. Just because they're albino, you can see those those red eyes, and you can't see well. But he is a beautiful animal. Gonna be awesome when these guys are making some babies. Who else do we have in here? Come here. I have two Indian spotted turtles. Now these guys are a critically endangered species, but captive breeding efforts has, you know, brought their numbers up significantly in captivity. So here in Florida, there's actually a total surplus of them, so you can get them as cheap as $50. But in other states, you can't get them because to cross state lines with them, you need a captive-born wildlife permit. Definitely one of the prettiest and most gorgeous turtles you can have. I mean, I'm just in awe every time I look at them. Let's look at your little friend. I mean, they're just so cool. And then last but not least, turtle-wise, we have, come here, my Madagascar big-headed turtle. They are in the top 25 endangered turtles in the world. So they are found only in, I believe, the lowland rivers of Madagascar. Super cool animal, super personable. But I'm just so ready to get these guys outside because I hate cleaning this water one to two times a week to keep it clean for them. 
And we're gonna feed them too. I got some Zumed aquatic turtle food. Best turtle food. Um, if any of you guys have turtles, if you're not already using it. I like to put the food in the little plants just because it kind of sticks around there. And I shut the filter off as well when they eat so the food stays in one place. But yeah, they're gonna eat right now. Have a good time doing that. And this is the end of the video. All right, everyone, I hope you guys had a great time watching this video. So the video, I'm a little bit under the weather. I was at Ultra Music Festival um, all weekend. So I'm sick from that. I'm hoarse because I was screaming my lungs out going crazy. So I don't have my full voice back and I'm just kind of feeling groggy and out of it. But I needed to get this video done and out of the way with. That's why I did it. So if I don't seem that enthusiastic, it's just because I'm not feeling that well. Anyways, I want you guys to subscribe below to my channel. There's just some, I have some incredible content coming for you guys. And I know all of you guys are going to love it. So subscribe below to my channel. Follow me on Instagram so you can see some of the stuff that I don't put on my YouTube. And just day-to-day -day stuff that's not going to be on YouTube. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Jacob. This is my channel. Bye.